In this video, I will discuss the hip bone in detail. The hip bone is a large irregular bone. This bone is formed by three parts, the ischium, ilium and the pubis. At birth, these three components are separated by a haline cartilage called the triradiate cartilage. This triradiate cartilage is Y-shaped and is joined in the acetabulum of the hip bone. By the end of puberty, the three regions will have fused together and by the age of 25, they will have ossified. Now come to the side determination of the hip bone. For the side determination of the hip bone, you should know three important points. First, you should know that the acetabulum should be on the lateral side. Second, the iliac crust should be on the superior surface. And the third, this iliac tuberosity should be on the posterior and medial side. So make the acetabulum lateral, the iliac crust superior and the iliac tuberosity on the posterior medial side. So this is the right hip bone. Now let's come to the bony landmarks of the hip bone. This foramen on the hip bone you see is the obturator foramen. This is the body of the ischium. There are two notches on the posterior side. As you can see, this one is the lesser sciatic notch, while this one is the greater sciatic notch. Between the lesser and the greater sciatic notch, this spine is called as the ischial spine. It is called the ischial spine because it is located in the part of the ischial bone. Now, in the iliac bone, we have four spines and we have named them according to their location. Since this is the anatomical position of the hip bone, so these two spines are on the anterior side and these two spines are on the posterior side. This is called as the posterior inferior iliac spine and above this is the posterior superior iliac spine. On the anterior side, this one is the anterior superior iliac spine and this is the anterior inferior iliac spine. On the hip bone, you can clearly see there is an eminence and this is called the iliopubic eminence because this eminence is present between the ilium and the pubis that's why it is called as the iliopubic eminence. This line you can clearly see is called as the arcuate line and when this line reaches the pubic bone then it is called the pectinal line. This whole fossa is called as the iliac fossa and this is the iliac wing. This is the iliac crust. On the iliac crust there is a tubercle called the iliac tubercle and on the inner side this is called as the inner lip. This tuberosity is called as the iliac tuberosity and this is called as the auricular surface through which it articulate with the sacrum bone. This is called as the symphysial surface and through this symphysial surface it is attached to the pubic symphysis. Now let's come to the other side of the hip bone. This whole surface is called as the gluteal surface and on the gluteal surface we have three gluteal lines. This line is called as the inferior gluteal line while this line is called as the anterior gluteal line and on the posterior side this line is called as the posterior gluteal line. 
this whole structure through which it articulate with the femur bone is called as the acetabulum the margin of the acetabulum is called as the acetabular margin inside the acetabulum this surface is called as the lunate surface and deep inside the acetabulum this is called the acetabular fossa now this notch is called as the acetabular notch this is called as the ramus of the ischium because it is in the ischium part and this is called as the inferior pubic ramus the inferior pubic ramus and the ramus of ischium are continuous with each other this tuberosity is called as the ischial tuberosity this is the pubic tubercle and this is the body of the pubis do not confuse the body of the pubis which is present on this side with the body of the ischium which is present on the other side